In describing Jesus' suffering for our sake, the Apostle Peter writes, When he was suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He did not threaten, and yet in St. Luke's Passion, which we hear tonight, we hear this remark from Jesus as he and Simon of Cyrene are going along what's called the Via Dolorosa, and they pause for a moment uh, to speak to the women who are mourning him. What Jesus says here sounds like a veiled threat. Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Among Jesus' first followers, there were many faithful women. And they, unlike the apostles who abandoned him in the Garden of Gethsemane, they followed Jesus all the way to the end. They followed him to the cross, and they will be there uh, to take care of his body, they think, at the tomb three days later. These are the ones who are the true daughters of Jerusalem. This is what Jesus calls them when he stops and speaks to them on the way to the cross. They are the true and the faithful children, not really of the earthly Jerusalem so much, but of the heavenly Jerusalem, the city above, the church, which is our mother. Now, as to the women of the earthly Jerusalem, so Jesus also says to us, do not weep for me. And as Jesus' disciples, we take his words to heart. The services of Holy Week, which culminate on Good Friday, are not funeral rites for Jesus. And so when our altar is adorned with black pyramids on Good Friday, do not be fooled by that. We do not feel sorry for Jesus. We do not eulogize Jesus as a hapless victim. We proclaim him as the savior of the entire world of sinners. There is a sense of somberness, and yet together with that, there is a sense of restrained joy which is a very Lutheran sentiment, restrained. We do not mourn Jesus' death because it is Good Friday. It is the day that our crucified Lord calls on the Father to forgive all the entire world for having broken faith with him, and the Father hears his prayer. Nothing could be better than that. Do not weep for Jesus. There will be trials and tribulations that you can weep about. The women of Jerusalem will know this firsthand because the thing that Jesus is predicting to them is the fall of the city of Jerusalem that happens, history tells us, 40 years from the time of Jesus' crucifixion. On Good Friday, when we hear these words, Mary will weep and mourn over the death of her son. But when the city of Jerusalem falls, the inhabitants of Jerusalem will weep over the death of their own children, who will be the casualties of the Jewish revolt that is decisively put down by the Romans. If there are tears to cry, they should be shed over sin and not over Jesus. We also do well to mourn the brokenness of a fallen world, the fallen one in which we live, which is infected by sin, a world in which children die and in which our greatest blessings, when they are taken from us, leave deep wounds in their place. It may sound irreverent, but the truth is that there are more sorrowful, more terrible, and much worse things than the death of the Son of God. There is living and dying apart from him. And during a faith in which you would rather the mountains collapse upon you instead of you taking refuge in him when the catastrophes come. The world will rage against the sons and the daughters of Jerusalem. Jesus says in the upper room, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before they hated you. If they do these things to Jesus when the wood is green, when the world is still in its springtime, when that window of God's grace has not yet closed, then imagine what they will do when the autumn chill comes, when the wood is dry, and when they need to gather fuel for their fire. 
is not exactly an encouraging thought. And yet the same Jesus who confronts the weeping women in Jerusalem also has told us this. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So the women, through tears, follow Jesus to the skull. They don't yet realize that their sorrow will be turned to joy. As of this holy moment, in this holy season, while the wood is still green, there is still time to shoulder Jesus' cross and follow on the way that he leads. And through him, your sorrow will turn into joy. In the name of Jesus. Amen.